Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Diane Keogh. I think we're going to get started for our next uh, session. It, it is the um, ETL Working Group. Uh, Mike Mendez, do we have you online? You should see, hopefully, a screen. ETL Working Group, PowerPoint. Looks good. Awesome. Hey, it's, this is working out too well. So with, where are the problems going to arise? Okay, so a quick agenda. I mean, we have an hour and it's really kind of packed. So quick, like, who are we? What are we? What we've done? Some of our past accomplishments, some of the future stuff that we're looking at. Um, and then Kavi is going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the DACA and the COVID-19 work that we've been doing. Uh, Jasper is going to talk about some ontology generation and conversion for ETL. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the Cynthia data set with the COVID-19 and how we ETL'd it into and how we're going to be distributing that. And then at the end, Keith Ellison is going to talk a little bit about some of his ETL experiences. Um, I want this to be an open conversation. I mean, we've had great presentations in the last two days. Um, but I really want this to kind of be inter interactive. If you see, like, because we're kind of developing stuff. Oh, oops. Oh, that's uh, not. Um, we've been developing, like, ETL tools for, uh, for the community, and we want the community to use them. So if we're developing stuff that's not usable or is not beneficial, then there's no real point. Um, so, okay. So, uh, so basically, we're an ETL group. We meet every uh, Tuesday. Uh, like once a month on Tuesday, on the first Tuesday of the month. And we kind of talk about what we've been doing. We've had some great conversations on Achilles. Uh, um, people have talked about some of their experiences. A lot of it's been uh, saved. Like we recorded a lot of the presentations, posted them up on the ETL uh, working group uh, wiki site. And so we also did a lot of work that we posted into the GitHub repository, and it's listed right here. This is our GitHub repository. Uh, so last year, we did a lot on kind of documenting what kind of things you should do uh, from, uh, from people's experience of um, when you're ready to ETL, what do you kind of look for? Uh, what's, what are some of the gotchas? I, if you're doing international, the date format is, is different than the US date format. Numbers are also, you might have commas and stuff, periods, things of that nature. And also like just ETLing like local lab codes into LOINC or local medications into NDC. So after we did this documentation, then we started working on some validation scripts. And we kind of used Achilles as kind of a baseline. We developed a bunch of, using Achilles, um, we kind of developed a bunch of tests using that. And then some validation, for example, it's like validating people on over 150 years old, people weren't born before they died. I mean, they died before they were born. Uh, you know, like visits before their birth dates, things of that nature. And then we kind of worked on some breakdowns and number of concepts, kind of validating like numbers should be increasing, like number of patients should be increasing every month. And if you had a drop in some section, then- Mike, we're having trouble hearing you. I think you might be covering your mic or, or, or there's, there's some static around your mic. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, is this any better? Yeah, that's much better. Thank you so much. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I, that, that's what I want to hear I, because I sound perfectly fine to myself. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, that was basically what we accomplished last year. And then this year, we started working on some of the ACT ontology. We loaded that into the ITB2 core uh, platform. We also worked on some like total nums. Um, so it, in your ontology, it shows you the total nums. And then uh, Jeff actually did a little bit more in, work on that, making it more robust, especially on the Postgres side. And the other thing before we uh, jumped into the whole COVID-19, like a lot of people, was we were looking at a way to make ETL easier for users. And so we're like, okay, uh, lots of people have done like their ETL straight from the EHR system into ITB2. And it, it could be done and it's been done a lot. But we're like, well, what if we go like a, like a, a step into something else and then from that go into ITB2? So we looked around, 
and we finally uh, uh, landed on Omaha. So I'm like, okay, this is good. So all we have to do is go from the EHR system to OMOS. And then we develop something from OMOS to ITB2, which, which both of these have been done. So now that the OMOS to ITB2 is done, and we actually, in the uh, GitHub repository, we have a next gen to OMOS. If someone wants to do, like say, all scripts, all they have to do is an all scripts to OMOS. And then because it's in OMOS format already, they can just use the OMOS to ITB2. The other benefit of being in the OMOS is it could be used for other projects, other data warehouses that you use, or for the All of Us project. So these ETL scripts have lots of benefit. And so we did the next gen. We're looking at uh, doing like all scripts, possibly our practice patients, or if anyone else ha wants to work, help, help us develop some EHR systems to OMOS, that'd be great, and we can post it. So that was kind of what we accomplished in the beginning of the year, in the first couple of months. And then the whole COVID-19 started to uh, occur. And so what we did was uh, we used uh, the ACT uh, version three COVID-19, which Michelle talked about just recently in the ontology one, and that they're gonna go into full depth in a couple hours on the, in the whole ACT. But what we did is we took the Cynthia data set and we use, so I'll explain a little bit later about what the Cynthia data set is, but it's 100, and we used a 1.2 million big patient set. And then we also found another Cynthia COVID-19 patient set that had about 2000 patients. And we basically merged them together. And then we also then loaded those into the ACT ontology. So, and that's what we're gonna be releasing soon. And that it will basically be um, another, demo data set, similar to the 133, but in this case, 1.2 million patients, with also has COVID uh, with some derived data and uh, medical ventilators and other things that you can then query. And then we're also gonna be doing some documentations on like how to load it up and how we did the mapping and then how it, you could uh, use your, your real system and then do the same type of mapping. So, so a quick thing, I kind of already kind of talked about this, but basically uh, right now for the scripts, it's only in SQL Server. We're looking at doing it for other platforms of Postgres and the uh, uh, Oracle. But the uh, next gen is basically just a SQL Server. So it kind of worked out. And like I said, we use the OMOTH data model so that it could be used for other projects. Okay. Um, and also, so once we go into the OMOS data model, Athena, I, here's uh, the link, the Athena, OHDSI.org. Um, they have a way they can download all the vocabularies and load those into your OMOS data set. So it will load in like the concept table, the vocabularies table, the care plan table, and various other tables so that the ontologies will be there so that all you have to do is load in your devices table, your uh, observation table, your occurring procedures table, and other ones. So the vocabulary, so this kind of gets you like a, a jump set to loading the ontologies into the OMOTH. Hey Mike, and, um, yep. Keith, just quickly, Keith had a question. Um, what versions of OMOTH are supported for the steward procedures? Uh, so right now, uh, I think it was six, uh, but let me double check. Uh, I know that the, all of us are using the 5.2, um, but I can't remember if we did the 5.2 or the six. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question. And actually it, it'd be a good question to see like which one should we support? I mean, just because six is out there, I know all of us is doing the 5.2, so should we just, is really 5.2 really the de facto in the OMOP? And that's kind of a question for the community. Uh, okay. So, okay. So, Kavi, are you on? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So, I incorporated your two uh, screens uh, into my presentation. So, tell me what when to go forward, and you're up. Sure. 
Hey, can we go to the first slide? Okay. Uh, a little bit of a digression here. Uh, I probably will speak for a total of five minutes. But uh, uh, so uh, I just want to talk about the I2B2 CDI project. It's part of the ETL, you know, uh, ETL effort. So the idea of this particular project is to enable I2B2 to be used in for clinical operations. And as a standalone, and for standalone research, like for example, at the level of a lab, uh, I2BD has always been used for, you know, at a at an institutional level for helping uh, clinic, uh, helping researchers identify cohorts for clinical studies. But to really take I2B2 into the clinical realm, it's got to be near real time. That's that's the main thing, and. Uh, uh, and also to make it more usable, it's got to be easy to install, uh, and it's got to be scalable, uh, and uh, scalable up. You know, it should scale up as well as scale down. And uh, uh, I think the main problem with I2B2 is that uh, it's an amazing, it's an amazing uh, concept, it's an amazing tool, but it is hard to understand. And it is intimidating. At least it was intimidating for me, and uh, continues to be intimidating. But uh, the more time I spend with it, I see that uh, so many things already solved and available in it. Uh, so, uh, so it, it, along so along the list of things to be done for for these things. So one is installation. So that's you know, we've got Dockerized containers, and we have been ha having them for the past few years. Some of you have used it, used them. And uh, you know, uh, so we try to match the I two B two release, and uh, so you can go to the website and see in 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 one line you can have I two B two downloaded and installed, uh, and it's easy to configure. It works well on it works on Postgres as well on uh, uh, MS SQL. Not work with Oracle still. Uh, so we have worked on simplifying the data model so that people who don't understand i2b2 don't know the terms of i2b2 can still be able to load data into it and should also be able to create ontologies uh, so we've done some work on that uh, and we are working on making uh, we've got a restful api smart on fire proof of concept work done before uh, we've been putting effort on derived concepts and uh, really still have just beginning to work on decision support and, and, and machine learning uh, so, uh, okay. So in the slide, so there are some papers below me which which cover you know the stuff which I presented here. Uh, so in this experiment, you know, uh, in the ETL group uh, with with Mike, here our objective was to leverage some of this tooling, and uh, and to really see if we can automate the installation and maintenance of I two B two. So. As part of that ETL tooling, there's a tool which should help. So there is a need for a tool which can help creation and distribution and loading of ontology. You know, you could see that uh, also echoed by the ontology working group uh, in the last hour. Uh, that was, uh, I think, number one point uh, in Jim's slide that to make it distributable and, and load, you know, easy to load, and then also to load facts. Uh, you know, it, it, it needs to be fast so that you can have incremental updates. And the mappings are automatically generated, the patient mappings and the encounter mappings. Uh, and then the next step is to incorporate uh, logic in with the data to really be able to, uh, you know, as as the COVID work has shown that there is a need for uh, uh, need for sharing phenotypic uh, phenotypic logic, and that's where the derived concept tool will come into play. So. Uh, Mike, can you go to the next slide? So this is like a very high overview. So this, this is an experiment, uh, and part of which, you know, uh, me and Mike, uh, we've worked on here, we're going to show, we've not completed this. So what we're basically doing is we want to automate creation and updation of an I2B2 instance. And what are the inputs for this automation? There is an ontology published somewhere. It may be published once every week or every few weeks, like in the case of COVID over here, and it's available externally, uh, you know, easily accessible in a GitHub, uh, like Michelle has been putting uh, putting it, it there. And then uh, 
just to demonstrate this work, we've been working on Cynthia data. Cynthia data uses Snowbed CD for a lot of the coding. So after, when we point our tool to both these in both these places, it should get the data and load it. But it's not going to work because you're you always need a code mapping. Your you know ontology is like in a standard coding format, and your uh, 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 local your data often has a local coding scheme. So often people do this manually. You know, do the mapping, and they then the ontology is it's a lot of manual effort to do that mapping. So uh, so in this tool, our effort has been that you just simply prepare a file which has got two columns. A CSV file which has got two columns. Left one is what is your local code, and your right is what's your, what's the standard code is mapping to, and the tool takes it and automatically adjusts the ontology so that you end up with an I2B2 instance which is queryable. So, so to set this up, and then and and then the last step is to really incorporate a, a stored procedure, uh, which is a derive which creates derived facts and the derived facts are defined in terms of the ontology which is uh, linking to your facts. Uh, and so our, ex our, our effort here is to show that it works on the Cynthia data set and, and demonstrate and make it available to everyone to see how it works. And also replicate that same procedure on uh, live EHR data. Only thing what changes here is the mapping and obviously we're using the EHR data at MGB. To create this instance. So this is the experiment uh, which we are doing, and uh, uh, Mike will show the details of you know of, of and demonstrate where where we've got to. So I want to stop here, Mike, and over to you. Okay, great. Thank. You. That's excellent copy. Yeah. And so um, I know there was a question about. Let me see if I can get uh, of where the uh, OMOF to ITB two conversion is, and so. I'm going to post, post that. Hold on a second. Actually, I think uh, let me just do a new share. Uh, you should see um, uh, a Chrome web browser. Diane? Yes. Okay. I just want to confirm just so I'm not like talking and people like, what's he talking about? Uh, but yeah, this is our GitHub repository. And as I said, this is with our checklist and some of the validation scripts that we did. And so right here is the next gen to OMOTH. And so basically we have some SQL statements. And so basically if you're familiar with OMOTH, uh, you'll realize that a lot of these uh, go down to some like the uh, provider uh, is comes from the provider mstr the master table and so basically it's just creating all these omoth table or uh, basically omoth loading the stuff into the omoth loading zone um so that's the ne that, this is the next gen to omoth and then the omoth itb2 is the one that basically takes it from omoth and then basically loads it into the observation fact so basically kind of creates the tables first. Uh, so what it's, uh, what it's first kind of doing is it's, it's dropping all the indexes first. And so then, um, yeah, here's the procedure to drop all the indexes. So you drop the indexes, you load the data in, and then you recreate the indexes. Uh, but just a quick, like here's a patient dimension and it's inserting it in from the person table. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just copy this link into the share. Okay. And so, uh, so now uh, Jasper is going to talk a little bit about what she was doing at uh, Boston Children's. Um, so, are you there? Yeah. Yes, Mike. Hi. Hello, everyone. Okay. So, I think. Uh, how do I change? I think Diane has to change presenters. She should be able, she's a she's a presenter already. I think you can stop sharing your screen, Mike. She should be able to share her screen. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> Diane, 
Uh, Mike, can you see my screen? Uh, I cannot. No, not yet. Share my screen. Yep, now, now we see it, great. Uh, hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about ontology generation and conversion using UMLS database. UMLS stands for Unified Medical Language System and it has set of database files, data files, which can be downloaded from the NIH website and can be uploaded in database. It brings together basically many health and biomedical vocabularies using which we can easily convert codes and ontologies between different industry standard source classification systems. Understanding this UMLS database is a big subject area on its own. In UMLS, all the information is organized in, in form of relational database tables. Key data attributes which are used in joining these tables are AUI and CUI IDs. AUI is basically a unique identifier and basic building block of UMLS database. For every occurrence of a code, string, and its source system name is given a unique identifier called AUI ID. And it has basically a, a string A followed by seven or eight digit number, which uniquely identifies the uh, identifies a code in a given source system. The next one is concept unique, unique identifier. This is a unique identifier for a concept. And this is a basically a grouping of different AUI IDs from different source system names, which point to, to same concept. So basically these are AUI IDs and CUI IDs. These are the uh, data attributes which help in conversion of data from one source system to another. And these are the important UMLS database tables and they store information on uh, concept names, their source, the hierarchy of the concepts and the AUIDs, relationship between them, and attributes and other details. For conversion of codes and generation of ontologies, we are going to basically use these two tables, which are MR console and MR higher table. MR console stores the concept name and the source system name. And MR higher store stores the computable hierarchies. So this is the graphical representation of those two tables. MR console table, this has, first one is that GUI, which is basically logical grouping of all the AUIDs, uh, which represent the same concept. And the primary key on this MR console table is AUI. AUID, which is basically a unique identifier for a given code, string, and the source system code. For, and each occurrence of these have a distinct AUID, and which is the primary key of MR console table. And in this other table, MR higher table, uh, uh, basically, uh, we join MR console table to MR higher table on AUIDs and get this PTR value, which stores the hierarchical ontology data. And 
And for any given AUIDs, we can have either no entry in this MR higher table, or it can have one or multiple rows. And primary key on this table is AUID and CXN number as multiple instances of, of AUID can exist in this number. So CXN number is just a sequential number. Uh, next, I'm going to walk you through how to generate, convert these, uh, generate ontologies for a given code in a given source system. Name. For example, here I have a, a SNOMED code of 72506001, and I want to get ontology using UMLS database for this code. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the AUIDs for the given SNOMED code from MR console table. So here I see three of the AUIDs and then I'm going to take these AUIDs and go to MR higher table and get the list of all the corresponding PTR values, which represents the hierarchy. Uh, uh, the ontologies corresponding to the AUID. So that the code which we initially started with, this has two different ontology structures. The, it, it is in path of two ontology structures. So it converts to these two concept path. And the, this ontology, which we derived from MR higher table, is in the format of AUIDs. So in order to convert it into the name care, uh, the usual concept path thing, we have to look up each of these individual AUIDs on the MR console table and get the name care field from there. For this, I have written a I have a database function which does the lookup and convert these two AUID structures into a, like this, which converts it into the name care field of the individual nodes. Next, I'm going to, next example is generation of ontology in another source system name, if we have a, a code at its source system name. So I'm going to use the same SNOMED example. Here I have the same code and the source system name is SNOMED. So in this scenario, I'm going to select all the GUIs from MR console table and, and corresponding to this GUI, so basically there will be one GUI corresponding to this code and the source system name. I'm going to take this GUI and get all the entries from MR console table corresponding to the new source system name. The earlier code was in SNOMED. Now I want to convert it into MSH source system name. So I'm going to get all the rows from MR console table for this GUI and the source system name equal to MSH and generate the list of all the AUIDs and take these AUIDs, go to MR higher table and get the list of the, of the PTR values, which is going to represent the ontology structure for the same code in the MSH source system code. And similarly, these codes can be looked up. This, this ontology structure is in the format of AUIDs. It can be looked up on MR console table and individual AUIDs can be replaced with the corresponding string from the MR console table. And we can have our normal concept path for these ontologies. With this, uh, 
that's that's all I have for presentation on the ontology conversion and code generation. I'll uh, transfer it back to Diane and Mike. Great, that's excellent. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so this basically merges everything in together of how we have snowbed codes and you need to map into other codes or how they link together or and how you create the like the C full name. So right. Yes. So does, it, does anyone has any questions related to this or? Okay. Uh, we'll also have a question and answer at the end. So, but thank you very much. Um, let me jump. Uh, let's see. Continue. Oh, hold on. Okay, so we should see the PowerPoint again. Yep, we see it. Thank you, Mike. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so so yeah, so we use the Cynthia data set. It's basically kind of it's a synthetic data set. So basically, it kind of uses algorithms to create realistic but not real patient data and <clears throat> uh, so there's um, there's a github repository out of it you can actually just run it yourself we actually just used the one that they provided um, the one that was provided was basically kind of a synthetic data set of Massachusetts um, so it had like higher populations in Boston than in uh, like Western Mass uh, and, but if you actually use the one, uh, the GitHub uh, code, you can actually create like a couple hundred patients or up to millions of patients. Uh, the one that's provided is 1.2 million patients. Um, so that was just on uh, like, that had like a various different medications, labs, procedures, and diagnosis. So like we mentioned earlier, we basically then found a list of data sets, here's the URL to them. And we found one that de dealt with COVID-19, um, basically based on the Cynthia data set. And so they had two uh, data sets there. There was uh, a veterans health one, and then they had uh, uh, non-veterans. So we basically just, and each of them had about a thousand patients in it. We just basically merged them together and then loaded the data. Um, and so the data was in various different link codes, NDC codes, and SNOMED codes. And so as Kavi was talking about, uh, he was able to convert some of the SNOMED codes, basically link the SNOMED codes into the ACT ontology so that you can then query the ACT ontology against the synthetic data set. Um, and so this is kind of a quick, um, so we did like a select distinct on all the different tables, um, starting in the top left going across, that's the procedures one. And all these codes were the unique codes for the procedures in, this, in just the COVID-19 data set. Uh, then we had the conditions in the middle and then the care plan on the, on the far right. Uh, the one that's kind of uh, down on the left hand side, th this was a devices one. And so there were four unique devices in the COVID one. And so we were, we're in the process of mapping these into our data set. And so as Kavi was talking about and Jasper was talking about, you can then take these SNOMED codes and then get the ICD-10 code, or you can then derive it into an ontology. Uh, and so this is just a quick uh, screenshot of what the ontology looks like. I'm gonna uh, actually show what it really looks like. Hold on, uh, let me stop sharing. Uh, let me sh share a screen of... Oh, 
Okay. Um, should see the attribute web client. We see it, Mike. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Just want to confirm instead of going through a demo and people are like, what are you looking at? Okay, so this uh, I created a Cynthia project, and so as uh, so this contains the act ontology uh, based against the Cynthia data set. So if we kind of look at the age, this is like I said, this is all fake data. This is not nothing real all synthetically created. Uh, but instead of having the 133 patient set, you can actually have a 1.2 million patient set. And so this is a breakdown of age. Uh, you have a breakdown of race, gender. Um, and then likewise, so this is just the Cynthia data set. And you have a, a rich uh, breakdown of various different diagnoses. So, and then similarly, you have like lab tests and then medication either alphabetically or in the VA class. Um, and the procedures was the only one that needs, uh, I noticed that the procedures, they didn't have a lot of them in the Cynthia data set. I have to look to see why, but there was a limited set. Um, so, th so these are basically just the Cynthia data set, the one the 1.2 million patient set. Then what we did was we merged the COVID-19 into it. And so this is where it's still, so we have like the confirmed cases, the uh, suspected cases. And so if we kind of look at one of these, um, we'll notice that, so in the ACT ontology as it is, it just has this ICD-10. This NOMED 67782005, this was added. So this is what copy, so, uh, so in the Cynthia data set, we, this was the SNOMED code associated to that patient. Uh, this was the, the SNOMED code basically. And so what Kavi did was he added this record into underneath this so that you can then query this. You can grab the acute re uh, respiratory, run the query, and keep in mind, this is on my local laptop. So, and I probably don't have the indexes properly set up. So last time I did this, it took like 20 seconds, but it'll eventually come back. Uh, but yeah, so, and then we have causes of uh, illness and we kind of need to start work. So yeah, so you have 437 patients. But what you can also do is because these are integrated in, you can then say, okay, how many are female? And run this. And so while that's running. So yeah, so in some of them, as we kind of mentioned, a couple of screen uh, PowerPoints previously, we, we do have some of the derived data. It's just that we have to map these from the OMLS into the, and then have another entry in here for the snowman. And so out of these 437, 209 are female. So, so yeah, so we'll be releasing this data set of basically COVID-19 with 1.2 million patients so that uh, people can see how you can map the, their own COVID-19 data into the ITB2 using the, uh, the ACT ontology. Uh, trying to see if there's any questions. Uh, no. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of what we wanted to demo. Uh, I think, so Keith was gonna talk a little bit about some of his experiences um, using ET, uh, his experiences with ETL. Keith, are you there? the chat saying he might not be available that he had something to make into his house or something oh uh, no. he just raised his hand uh, Keith, you gotta unmute yourself if you want to talk yep no can you hear me yep okay thanks mike um yeah unfortunately i've got an electrician here and i'm on my ipad and whatnot so but uh, still working through that. I think the ETL um, working group, you've highlighted a number of the key issues. 
I think that working with the synthetic data is actually a great way to work out ETL issues. One of the key challenges in working with Cynthia, as you know, is that it doesn't support ICD-9 and 10. It only supports SNOMED. I've spoken with the group at MITRE about this that is responsible for the, the Cynthia project. And they don't currently have plans to, to change that. But uh, that might be something, given that it's an open source project under Apache 2, that some of us could take a look at uh, and work with a bit more. But uh, um, I think that, that it's a great way to work out some of your, your key issues with, um, you know, with uh, various ETL projects. For us, we've been working with a couple of different groups on the ETL side. Um, one in which, in particular, uh, Mike, I think you kind of went through a little bit of the, the challenges in supporting ACT and OMOP. Uh, so we've had uh, a customer in particular that has had the need to support uh, data contributions to the uh, All of Us program, um, and that uses OMOP. And we've been able to, to set up I2B2 not only to work as a clinical research environment, but for them to use cohort selection, identify their, uh, the patients that are part of All of Us, and then use that as a submission form uh, for submitting the, the All of Us uh, data. And I think that one of the challenges there between I2B2 and All of Us is that All of Us is supporting 5.2 of OMOP. And I think the uh, most of the support that's been built into I2B2 has been supporting OMOP 6. And so there's some key differences there that one has to work through. The other thing we're, we've been working on with the ETL side has been uh, with, the, with the translational data. And uh, Peter, I think, spoke a little bit yesterday in the context of the, the Transmark COVID-19. One of the things that we're trying to do is, is harmonize the curation of, uh, of data, particularly in the context of the COVID-19 project, with the medical terminologies that are in ITB2. Our key goal is that uh, as part of the Transmark 20 project and part of the, the Dell project to, to bring the ITB2 and Transmark data models closer together is also to use common uh, terminologies. And so that we can, we can have that level of ontology and representation in Transmark uh, that we've grown used to in ITB2 and uh, bring that forward. So today Transmark typically curates things in a very flat uh, based approach but having the, the full ontology curation there, I think is really gonna be very important as we go along. And particularly when we think about version 20 with Transmark, where we'd like to be able to select a cohort in ITB2, uh, establish that as a study in Transmark, and then be able to do the kinds of analyses that we can do in, in Transmark with that cohort of patients as a study. And I think that's really one of the key drivers behind the, the integration of ITB2 and Transmark that we've been you know, hoping for, for for a number of years, and I think we're actually in a, in a good path to achieve. Um, what else did you want to hear about, Mike? I think, uh, you know, you certainly know quite a bit about a lot of these issues. We've worked together on some of them. Um, I think the other issue that, that I would bring up, and we talked about this in the ontology working group, is that we have a number of groups internationally now um, working with different medical ontologies. And one of the challenges is, um, how to bring those things either into ACT or to have a more universal uh, ontology or perhaps an interchange ontology that we can bring everything into and then translate it into different local uh, versions. The other thing that's uh, I think very important is language support. Um, while in, in the Transmart world, uh, most research scientists, et cetera, um, you know, English is the language of science. Um, when it comes to medicine and clinical research, local languages are in fact the, the lingua franca. Uh, sort of coin a phrase. And so uh, we're, we're quite interested today in uh, French language support. So how do we support, um, you know, two languages of ontologies in the same instance uh, with the ETL process? Uh, and how do we bring those forward in an ETL process? Um, how do we support language in the ITB2 web client? Um, we have a, a collaborator that has developed, you know, a, a French language version of the ITB2 web client. Um, as a one-off, just to see how, uh, how difficult that is to, to build. But I think building in some language localization and ways in which we can continue to bring that code forward uh, would be very useful. But, you know, certainly from an ETL perspective. Is, is Peter online? Peter, are, are you there somewhere? If Peter's online, if he could raise his hand, I think Peter can speak to a, a number of the ETL issues around Transmark um, that we've been working in through. You know, today we have, I think it's over 250 um, 
curated Transmart data sets that are ready for ETL. One of the key challenges is, is the terminologies across those 250 data sets are not unified. And uh, as we try and bring those into a single instance, is being able to unify the terminologies in the ATL process, I think would be a really uh, important thing to be working on. Yeah, I just looked, Keith. I don't see Peter online, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm here, yeah. Can you oh. hear me? Okay, yeah. Great. Yeah, I, I was here, but I didn't have a microphone on. I was just listening on the speaker. So, so I don't know, Peter, if you want to comment on that. Yeah, sure. So, so one of the issues I mentioned yesterday with Transmart is that um, a lot of the stuff isn't human. So when we put stuff into the transplant ontology, okay, it's, it's under study and then lower levels, but we have to make something up for uh, mice and cells and various other things that have gone into the studies that transplant's using. Um, and we'll try and standardize those. And it also ought to be possible to use things like diagnosis and put the same standard codes in with um, maybe some way to simplify the view in Transmart so you don't have to burrow down all the levels to get to the diagnosis. And there's only one term you want, you could just shorten what you see. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so follow up, Keith, on your question about the ontology localization. I do know that the ICD-10 code ontology is localized into various different uh, languages. I know for a fact, because I've used the one for Spanish in the past. So. Yeah, no, I, you're right, Mike. There, you know, there are some support there. One of the challenges is that in, in Canada, they don't use ICD-10. Um, and so that, you know, the key challenge is if you're using SNOMED or using other terminologies, how do we, how do we address that? Um, I think getting things into, you know, in, if, if we could think of ACT as sort of a first pass at a universal medical ontology, and we could come up with something that we could translate, you know, into and then language, you know, build the language translation into that. I think that would be really useful for collaborative networks. You know, as, as I think um, Zach has shown with his 4CE project is having, you know, collaborative networks that are, are global and international, uh, I think can be incredibly powerful. And terminology is going to be one of the key ways that we need to one of the key things, issues we need to focus on to be able to do that more effectively. You know, Matve, yeah. I think, has, has, has chimed in on that as well since they have, I think he said, 26 countries represented. And this is something in, in the, the research space and the translational space we haven't had to address because everything's in English. Um, but when you're dealing with medical terminology, you know, everything is localized. And, and that's a real challenge. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, the web client would be useful if it was localized. Um, so I know that, that someone, someone just uh, asked the question, uh, so is the French localization project of the ITB2 web UI publicly available? If yes, is it possible to share the URL? I think that's more um, for you, Chris. I mean, not uh, Keith. Yeah, no, it, it's not yet publicly available. It was developed by a collaborator of ours up in Montreal. Um, I've been talking with them about releasing that code. And so that discussion is ongoing, but it's not yet released. So. Um, they're a proprietary health IT company. Um, they're, they don't quite understand how to open source things. So that's the, the part that we're working through. They have every intention of open sourcing it, but it's just working through the issues. Okay, great. Uh, so one thing I just forgot, uh, uh, forgot to mention in this, in the ACT ontology. Um, so like he was saying, everything was in SNOMED code, but yet in this ACT one, these are actually uh, the ICD-10 code. So, the conversion, so there's two ways of doing the conversion. One was the way that um, Kavi had done it. Uh, the other way is the way I did it, which was there was only about 200 uh, like uh, diagnosis in this um, Cynthia data set. So I basically just Googled it. So I used Google to translate it. I, so I got, which I thought was probably the closest one to the, the one. I'll probably try using Kavi's method to see how accurate these were. But like I said, it's demo data. So even if this 21,000 really should have been in this one, it's really demo. Uh, so that's kind of how we got around the uh, SNOMED. In well, one of the things I, I think we should try and encourage in, in this field is using open terminologies. We talk a lot about open source. Yep. But, um, you know, there are a number of proprietary terminologies out there like SNOMED in which that's a, a key issue in terms of, 
people being able to implement them or translate them, et cetera. And so I, one of the things I think we should really focus on, and I talked with Harry Sleeper and the guys at MITRE about this, is why are they, you know, with an open source code supporting a proprietary terminology? Um, so I think that we need to think, you know, quite a bit about how we have open terminologies, you know, from that fair perspective. Right. Okay, so we have about, well, eight minutes left. So I kind of want to open this up to the community. So you've heard a lot in the last 50 minutes from us talking about what we've done, what we're doing, various experiences. What would be beneficial to you guys? Um, we actually have a couple of raised hands. I'm going to unmute uh, the first one, which I believe is Mary. Okay, great. This is, Hold on one yep. second. Yep. Marin, I think you're able to talk now. You'd like to unmute yourself? No? Marin, we're going to move on and we'll circle back. If you need to raise your hand again, feel free. Um, we have another raised hand from Michelle. I'm going to allow Michelle to talk. Michelle, you're ready. To you're good to go. Yeah, uh, Mike, I, I don't know. I may have missed this because I wasn't here for the whole thing. So did you use the uh, like OMOP tables to do your transition, like your translation from these ICD-10s to um, SNOMED? Oh, you mean uh, for the, the diagnosis ones? Yeah. No, what I did was I took the SNOMED code. I went to Google. I said SNOMED, that code, space <laughs> ICD-10. And the first one that came up is what I used. So uh, an easy way to do it is to use the OMOP, um, what are you say, the concept ID and concept relationship table. And you can translate everything really quickly. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I, that's, that's what kind of uh, Kavi had done. And that's what I was planning on doing. I was trying to do it and it didn't seem like it was working. So I was like, this is, <laughs> I, I took the other method, uh, okay. but yeah. I'm def yeah, we're gonna circle around and try that again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the Snowmed CT site has got a published uh, uh, published list of the mapping. Uh, so we leveraged that initially, uh, and it is it was it was up to date. I think the last one was released in March. So because we're dealing with Snowmed CT uh, Snowmed codes we could uh, just make use of that to a large extent. But there are some codes we didn't map to ICD-9, uh, ICD-10-CM. So that's the part where uh, Mike had to do manually. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you said there was another raised hand. Um, we, uh, I think that they might have raised their hand in error, so we'll just give them oh, a little. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah. So, is this stuff useful to people? I mean, um, is it beneficial? Yeah, it'll be great to know uh, how many people look forward to using tooling to first is to stand up I2B2, maintain it. And thirdly, to load data into it, whether it's ontology or whether it's your own local data or whether it's this mapping problem, uh, would they would they find that uh, do they find that tooling is going to be helpful? I think Mary has uh, raised her hand. I'm not sure if I can grant uh, talk. Yeah. Oh, hello, everyone. Hi. Um, can everyone hear me? Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, we're just getting started with I2B2. We are in Canada. Uh, we're in Manitoba. So we do uh, have uh, our cancer registry, which would be our, our main data. And we do have ICD-10, ICD-9s, and CCI codes for treatment. So we don't really use the snow meds. Um, how, uh, so you're saying that there is a mapping from the SNOMED to the ICD-9 or should we just import our own in ontology? 
Okay, so if you um, you can load this Nomad ontology into ITB2. Uh, it's been done in the past. Um, or you could just do a subset of this Nomad ontology. But this Nomad ontology is huge. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <but> yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you do do, uh, so I'd recommend probably a subset of the ones that you actually use, or you could, uh, like Kavi was saying, you can convert the SNOMED to ICD-10. Um, it depends on really what your end goal is. If you uh, want to say like join the ACT network, the ACT network deals with ICD-10, CPT, um, uh, LOINC, so you you would then have to convert it from SNOMED to to the ICD-10 format. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So a couple of questions. Uh, hold on. Uh, okay. So uh, so this is useful, beneficial, both as training and illustration for your uh, investment. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so it would be useful to know which of these approaches I use uh, at scale. Often the various ETL mechanisms um, look interesting but turn out to be used in a rich uh, production environment. For example, ITPG ETL, OMOTH, uh, tied to B2, uh, right on top of OMOTH. Uh, knowing, say, who in ACT is using what uh, with much data may help people know uh, what to look for on their sites. Um, uh, thanks, looking forward to having a look. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so it's true. Uh, we definitely want to know like what's useful uh, and what's beneficial to people. So I think we basically coming up to the end of the hour now. Um, any last comments? Um, and like I said, we meet every uh, the second Tuesday, uh, or the second, the first Tuesday of every, every month. And uh, if you want to join, that's great. Um, look forward to seeing seeing every uh, seeing you. And uh, I think that's basically it on my end. Uh, any last words from any of the panelists or anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody. I think this was um, this was really a, a packed um, uh, talk. So thanks for putting that together and spending all the time. Um, um, Desiree is putting a couple of chats in the chat window. One is uh, the link to the survey for the um, ontology working group. Um, they, I think, we had to post it before, but we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to take a look at that and respond um, to give them some direction. Um, and the second link that's gonna be included is a link um, asking um, the, the folks, what additional um, working groups do you think should be formed as part of the foundation? So any ideas around anything new um, that we could pull together around people and, and, uh, and work together would be great. So thanks everyone.